Imagine buying Nvidia before the AI boom. Imagine buying Apple long before the iPhone ever came out. That's the kind of potential we could be seeing with quantum computing stocks right now. In today's video, we're gonna be covering a couple of these companies, because of course, looking at quantum computing, it could be the next trillion dollar companies that we're gonna see, or could it be a very overhyped bubble? Now, I wanna break down two major articles that we found over on the Monty Fool. I'm breaking these down, looking at the headlines, and if you look everywhere, quantum computing is really a once in a lifetime opportunity. Once this scales, once this takes off, if there is feasibility behind this, which there is a ton of testing, I wanna give you the take on these companies and also seeing the exponential growth. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Dennis, breaking down some complex investing topics, looking at AI, looking at tech, also looking at the emerging industries, data-driven analytics. Want to drive through and show you exactly what these companies are doing when it comes to quantum computing. We're going to be looking at D-Wave, IonQ, and Regetti are three, again, companies that are very frontline when it comes to quantum computing and the technology. Now, of course, I also did read a couple articles about when we look at quantum computing, having the ability to actually process things in such a, a crazy amount of time, coupled with something like AI, coupled with something like data centers, all of this running together could just be absolutely explosive within the next 10 years. Now, quantum computing isn't just fast computing. I want you to realize exactly how this is different. It is a completely different paradigm that is in there. Instead of using zeros and ones like we traditionally see within computing, it quantum computing uses qubits. Now that is what exactly they call it. It's a particle that is in multiple states at once. And of course, this means that a supercomputer or a quantum computer could solve problems in seconds. Where it would take today's supercomputers centuries? Think about that for a moment. Supercomputers are solving problems in centuries where quantum computers can do it in seconds. That is crazy. Now, when we start putting in kind of the practical application, drug discovery, genetic research could be accelerated material science, energy storage, financing models, AI training, cryptography. There are so many things out there that we could really do. Quantum stocks are really surging right now, but there are so many topics that we could do in so many different ways that we could see this. When we start looking at these companies, a majority of them, even this year, have seen 100, 2, 3, 400% growth, which again, a lot of people are just saying, this is the very tip of the iceberg until we see the practical application of what it's gonna be. So even when you think about investing into some of these companies, long before AI was even invented, that is the reason why we have two big front runners in here. The first one is D-Wave and the second one is IonQ. Which one's a safer bet? So breaking it down, and I'm doing this from an investment perspective. When we look at D-Wave, it uses quantum annealing. So this is specific tasks. So when you think of your computer doing something specifically, logistics, optimizing problems, it is faster, but a lot of people are saying this might not be easily scalable to all applications. Now, IonQ, on the other hand, trapped ion gate-based computing lot more flexibility and this one is the one that offers a much powerful long-term approach when it comes from an, an investor's perspective now they're saying that ionq is the safer play because the technology will actually be able to use and fully use the utilization of quantum computing but of course d-wave is not out of the game by any means on um, they're already selling hybrid system commercial clients which means it has been proven now that it can be monetized today, not just theory, you know, in actual space, in relatively, it is actually here. So INQ would have a better tech, probably long run. D-Wave could be the better cash story because they are already having and seeing those commercial applications. Now, the second article, again, this was over on um, MSN. They were talking about Ion, DQ, and then it brought in Rigatti. Now, this, of course, is the holy trinity as they're considering it when it comes to quantum investing as a once in a lifetime opportunity like we we're talking about. When you look at IonQ, it is building momentum with strategic acquisitions and partnerships, meaning some of these really big tech companies can really further really drive the early AI boom, drive the semiconductor boom. Um, it's almost following the exact same pattern, just about 10 years behind. And when we start looking at Rigatti, that is another one, new architecture and looking at expanding the qubit count, 
being able to do things faster and really at a crazy amount of speed. And then D-Wave continuing in that commercial footprint like we were talking about, targeting industrials that need quantum optimization today, not just a year, a decade, two decades down the road, they need it today. But here's where the hype can get a little bit risky. Again, it's taking a step back, looking at the investor side of it. These companies have little to no profit um, for a majority of them. They are relying strictly on raising capital and the trade valuations are already really priced super high. So you have to be cautious. But honestly, again, thinking of the investment side, putting a percent in here might not be a game changer, um, but it could make a difference in a portfolio if continue um, to see these run. There is a huge upside on it, but know that there is extreme volatility when it comes to these. So of course, when we think of quantum computing, is still kind of pre-emerging, pre-commercial. Think of it of the internet back in 1993. Very promising, but mostly unproven at this point. Now, of course, before we get in, again, thinking of the investor side, there are a few things to really keep in mind when it comes to these companies. Cash burn, dilution risk. They need a ton of capital, just like we traditionally see with tech companies. However, might be a little bit easier to raise it just for the simple fact that the Federal Reserve has now started to um, seeing the quantitative easing or lowering interest rates, technical hurdles, this is gonna take a lot. There are gonna be error corrections, there are gonna be problems, there's gonna be bottlenecks, and we're years away from this actually having a large scale practical application, like we see with something like semiconductors and NVIDIA right now. But again, this could be you know what NVIDIA was 10 or 15 years ago. Valuation is kind of insane. IMQ trades at a forward ratio that is well above almost all AI companies, very minimal revenue growth. So again, be very careful. And there is also a lot of competition. When you look at Google, IBM, Microsoft, they are starting to build their own quantum systems outside of this, deeper pockets, really larger teams, and also the ability to capitalize on here. Now they look pretty exciting, but like I said, they are kind of a moonshot um, as a core holder. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be investing in, it just means that you could be a very, very small. So how am I playing the quantum theme right here with the computing, looking at IonQ, D-Wave, and Rigatti? I am putting 1% into each of those. Um, IonQ, really the long-term potential is there. Strong tech, smart acquisition, growing, and really having a lot of adoption in there. Valuation on this one is pretty rich. Then you look at D-Wave. This is the cash flow where we feel like the commercial application is already there. And then Rigatti is kind of the wild card. Huge potential, but needs to prove stability in there. So again, when you start looking at this, allocating 3% of a total portfolio towards the quantum play, really considering a five to 10 year horizon does make sense when it comes to the investing side. Remember, not financial advice, just telling you what I'm doing, but it is a framework when we start looking at portfolios and looking at the satellite. So I wanna hop over and show you what we're looking at and what kind of returns that we have seen so far because it is kind of incredible to see. So right here, we're comparing the IonQ, Qubits, and Rigatti. So again, th those three companies we're talking about, and we're looking at the last month. So look at this last month, guys. We can see that Rigatti is up 176%, Qubits, um, which is up 127. Then we have IonQ, which Qubits is D-Wave. Um, IonQ is up 88% in the last month. You talk about some stocks that are absolutely exploding. When we go back six months, you can see right here, we do have IonQ at 281. This is in six months, guys. Then we can see um, right here, 456 and 452. So both of them, Rigatti, and of course, D-Wave is super, super high at a 456. That's why I said, guys, if you put this at one, two, three percent of our portfolio, it does make sense because of course it gets a little bit crazier. When you start looking at year to date, you can see much lower when it comes to D-Wave, but you can also see that Qubits absolutely, or excuse me, absolutely crushing it is D-Wave. And then um, Rigetti is right down here at 173. Again, IonQ still 89%. But then we go out even further going to a year, look at the growth in the last 12 months, guys. We're at 5,214%. If you went all in on this a year ago, um, looking at where we have seen the growth in here, even looking at D-Wave right there at 3,400, even looking at IonQ at 748. Again, if you're investing, if you're investing heavily in some of these quantum computing companies, um, it would be kind of insane to see some of the valuations. And you'll notice though, it's been a very short wave that has grown this year. So again, 
You can see even here IonQ, kind of the steady growth going up, even looking at a longer term where these other two companies are a little bit newer. And even looking down here, guys, look at the losses. Now, this is something that I, you have to take in mind and you really do have to think about is looking down here, guys, 94, 94, 95% down. They were down to 45 cents. It was down to 42 cents. I mean, even IonQ rate right there was down to $6. So when we think of Rigetti, when you think of D-Wave, right there was 42 cents. Right now it is trading at $35. Again, Rigetti was down to 40 something cents. It's at $42 right now. That is the reason why we're seeing these absolute craziness. But of course, for everyone that sold way down here when it was negative 50, 60, 70, negative 90%, pretty much the company was bankruptcy at that point. But like I said, with a bigger portfolio, putting it in, and I believe overall, I put a couple companies in there, and I think it's even less than 1% of the portfolio. So again, not going to have a huge, huge mega impact um, when it comes to the ability to put you know $100,000 into something of this nature or buying it when it was super cheap. Um, but it's interesting to see because so many of these companies have just been going and really shooting for the moon. Even when we go to the max, guys, again, we are seeing over a thousand percent return right here. Um, and this is going back to, I believe, the beginning of 2022. So you're talking the last, what, three years, a little over three years, they're looking at an 1100 percent return, 837 right there on, on the Rigetti, and then 250 in the qubits, which is the D-Wave. So again, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what it looks like when it comes to building this out and when it comes to the portfolios itself. Um, but guys, that is going to do it. Honestly, is quantum computing the next trillion dollar industry? Um, right now, it's a race between the vision and the viability to actually make this work. Um, IonQ, like we said, has the edge when it comes to innovation. D-Wave has the commercial traction starting to see the application in there. Then Rigatti might surprise everyone or it could go absolutely bankrupt depending what it is. So before you ask yourself, before you're buying this, guys, are you investing in the future of computing or is it just going to be an illusion of the processes that we never see? Now, do you think any of these quantum computing stocks are going to have an actual runway? Do you think they have the best shot? So guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.